Hey everyone, are you ready for this? We're diving into some seriously cool HIV research today, like really cool. You know, what really got me about all of this is how they're trying to go after the HIV reservoir. I mean, that's that's like the holy grail, right? Right, like that's the key. Okay, so our source material today, like super fresh, literally just came out of CROI 2025. Mm. And um, it's all about, you know, this new therapy they're calling IMC M113V. And they're saying it's a T cell receptor by specific therapy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Dunno. I know. It's a lot. It's a lot of words. Yeah. But stick with us. It's really interesting stuff, I promise. So so think about, you know, when you get a cold, right? Yeah. And your body's fighting it off. It sends out these things, T cells. They're like little warriors, right? Right. And they target the virus. Well, this therapy is basically like giving those warriors a serious upgrade, you know? Like they're laser focused on HIV now. Okay. I like that. Yeah. So. So then what about the bi-specific part? What does that even mean? So it's kind of like, um, imagine you give those T cells like a homing beacon, right? Ah. That guides them straight to the cells that are infected with HIV. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not just like keeping the virus down. It's going after the actual cells where it is. Exactly. That's like, that's a whole different level. It is. It is. And you know, the antiretrovirals we have now, they're great. Don't get me wrong. They're fantastic. Yeah. But they mostly just stop the virus from like copying itself. This therapy, it wants to actually make that reservoir smaller, you know, like get to the root of the problem. That's really cool. Yeah. It's like a, a totally new approach, like that article was saying how new this is. And it's super exciting because, you know, people living with HIV, even when their treatment is working, there's always that like that worry. It's still there. Right. This therapy could it could really change that. Wow. OK, so this almost sounds too good to be true. Like, are there any reasons why this might not might not actually pan out? Yeah, so we have to remember, this is just a phase 12 trial. So really right now it's all about, is it safe? Mm. And how much should we be giving people? You know, it's early. So very early days, small group. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that look good, right? Like even at this point. Totally, yeah, absolutely. Um, the article said it seems to be like well tolerated so far. Okay. And. And even cooler, like the more they give, the more of a decrease they see. Wait, a decrease in what? Like, what are they measuring? So they're looking at this thing called cell-associated HIV RNA. It's basically like a like a signal, you know, mm. that the virus is active inside the cells. Oh. And the fact that it's going down, especially when they give more of the therapy, that's a good sign. Okay, so that's huge then. It's not just like, you know, hiding it. It's actually like it's going after those. So Exactly. It's huge. Yeah, and you know, one of the like really interesting things about the trial, there were some people who, um, after they got the therapy, they could actually, they were able to control the virus even when they stopped their regular HIV meds. Whoa, wait a minute, now that's really interesting. That's like, Im imagine right. no meds and you're basically virus free. Right. That's amazing. But but remember, super small trial, you yeah. know? Right. Shit. So we need we need more bigger studies, you know, to to really know. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's promising. Yeah, for sure. So so before we, you know, get too far ahead of ourselves, let's let's talk about what we mean when we say functional cure because that's that's the buzzword here, right? Uh, yeah. What does that actually mean? So it's really important to understand it's not about like you know, wiping out every single bit of HIV in your body. It's more like it's like it's about getting it down so low that it's like basically undetectable and it, it can't you know it can't make more copies of itself to make you sick like hitting the mute button on hiv you know what i mean oh okay yeah so it's still there but it's like it can't do anything exactly exactly and the cool thing about this therapy this imc m113v is that it seems like it's actually getting us closer to that you know yeah. like by actually shrinking that reservoir where the virus likes to hide right right and that thing we were just talking about where some people could control the virus even after they stop taking their regular hiv meds that kind of fits with this whole functional cure idea right it does it really does it's a it's a good sign but you know got to be careful got to be cautious right right still a small trial very early we need those bigger trials more people higher doses all that to really know for sure okay so those trials they take time right yeah. but let's say let's say everything goes well you know and this therapy it actually works it's successful what does that even look like like in the real world that's the part that always kind of blows me away when we talk about these hiv breakthroughs you know oh it's huge it's absolutely huge imagine People living with HIV, they don't have to take pills every day. They don't have to worry about side effects. You know, it changes everything, not just for them, but for like the whole healthcare system, even society, you know. 
Okay, break that down for me. What would that actually mean for someone who's who's living with HIV? Like day to day, what would that look like? Well, I mean, think about it. No more daily pills. No more, you know, worrying about those side effects. You know, less stigma, feeling more like, like everyone else, living longer, healthier. And I mean, ultimately it's hope. Hope for a future where HIV, it's not this thing that, that defines your life, you know? Wow, yeah, that's that's really powerful. But I'm also thinking about like the cost, you know, something like this, something this big, would it would it be available to everyone? Would people be able to afford it? That's a really important question, absolutely. And, you know, from a healthcare perspective, if this therapy, you know, if it ends up saving money in the long run, that's actually a huge win because it means, you know, more resources for other things. It's a win-win. And then there's the like the whole social impact, right? Yeah. If this if this functional cure, if it actually happens, I mean, it could really change how we think about HIV, couldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Totally. I mean, it could help break down the stigma even more, lead to more understanding, more acceptance, you know. It's almost hard to, to like even imagine all the ways this could change things, you know. No, it's really it's really amazing. And it just shows you like the power of science and that these researchers, they're they're incredible. They're out there changing the world. Yeah, that's true. This research, it really makes you think differently about HIV, you know? Yeah. Like usually it's it's about managing it, right? Yeah. But this this could change all that. Yeah. And it raises some interesting questions too, right? Like if this functional cure thing, if it becomes a reality, what happens to, you know, prevention? Like yeah. would people who have a functional cure, would they still need to think about pre-AP? And what about like how people feel about it? Yeah. You know, if someone knows they have a f functional cure, but the virus, you know, technically it's still there. Would they still like feel the same stigma? These are some some pretty deep questions. You know, <sighs> we need to be talking about this stuff now, I think. I agree. Totally agree. We can't just focus on the science. You know, we have to think about the human side of things, too. It's important. OK, so we've talked about the science. We've talked about the potential benefits, the challenges and some pretty like heavy stuff about what this could mean for the world. But there's one more thing I kind of want to dig into a bit more, and that's, you know, this whole functional cure thing. We talked about it a bit earlier, but I think it's worth spending a little more time on it. Yeah, you're right. It's it's a really important concept. And to really understand what this research means, you got to understand that. So walk me through it. Like, why is it so important to to really get the difference between a functional cure and what they call a sterilizing cure? OK, so sterilizing cure. That's what most people think of when they hear the word cure, right? Like it's gone every last bit of it. Right. But with HIV, that's that's really, really hard to do, like almost impossible, at least for now. So sterilizing cure, not really on the table right now. Not really, no. But functional cure, that's that's different. That's about getting the virus down so low that like it can't be detected and it can't replicate enough to cause illness. It's like it's like being in remission, right? Like yeah, it's, it's still there, but it's it's asleep. It can't hurt you. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why this research is so, so important. It's not about getting rid of every last bit, which, like we said, is super hard. It's about figuring out a way to live with it without it, you know, messing with your health, messing with your life. I like that. It's like it's a whole new way of thinking about it. But also makes me wonder if this functional cure thing, if it actually happens, how does that change how we think about preventing HIV? You know? Yeah, that's a that's a great point. It definitely adds another layer to it all, right? Like, would people with a functional cure, would they still need PEP? Would they still be considered, you know, infectious? These are all things that, you know, scientists, policymakers, they're going to have to figure out. It seems like this functional cure, it's it's a good thing, obviously. <laughs> but it also, it brings up all these new questions, yeah. you know, like ethical questions, social questions. For sure. And those conversations, we got to have them now, you know, as the science is moving forward, we got to be ready for a future where where this might actually be real, you know, a functional cure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot to think about, but that's that's what we do here. Well, right? Exactly. We dive deep. We get into the, the complicated stuff, the new stuff. We get our brains working. Exactly. You know, maybe we should maybe we should take a minute and, and kind of sum up what we've learned. You know, like, what are the big takeaways from all of this? All right. So much to unpack here. We've gone from, like, the science behind this IMC M113V thing to, you know, what a functional cure could mean for people, for everyone, really. A lot to process. But before we go, maybe let's just, like, try to sum it all up. Like, what are the big, big things you want people to remember from this? 
You know, I think the biggest thing is just how different this therapy is. It's not like those other meds that just keep the virus down. This one, it's designed to actually shrink that HIV reservoir. And that's like, that's something we've never been able to do before. It's a total game changer. So it's not just about like managing it. It's about actually helping your body, you know, fight back even better. Exactly. And that brings us to, you know, that second big point, that whole functional cure idea. We talked about it a lot, but it's worth saying again, it's not about getting rid of every single tiny bit of virus, which, like we said, is so hard to do. It's about getting to a point where the virus is basically undetectable, it can't spread, and it can't make you sick. Like hitting that mute button, right? Like you were saying. Exactly. And then the third thing, I think, is to like, you know, be excited, but also be patient. These early results, they're awesome. They're really great. But we need those bigger, longer trials to really know for sure, to know it's safe, to know it works. Right. So excitement, but also patience. It's like finding that balance. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's important to remember, like, this discovery, any scientific discovery, it didn't happen overnight, right? There were so yeah. many researchers before this doing the work, making this possible. It's amazing. Yeah, science is a long game, right? It's a it marathon. Is. And speaking of marathons, we've reached the end of ours. As always, though, we want to leave you with something to, to think about, a question, something to keep turning over in your mind even after we're done here. All right, here's one. Imagine, you know, a future where this functional cure, it's real, it's out there, people can get it. How would that change things for people living with HIV? Like their relationships, their jobs, even how they see themselves. And even bigger than that, how would it change how we, as a society, think about HIV? Would there be less fear? less stigma, more, more understanding. It's, it's a future worth thinking about. It shows you how science, how it can change the world and how we think. So to everyone listening, stay curious, keep learning. This whole field of HIG research, <laughs> it's always changing, always moving forward. And who knows, maybe one day this functional cure, it won't just be something we talk about. It'll be something that's helping people all over the world. That would be amazing. It would be. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. Until next time.